One of the most popular categories of browser extensions out there are ad blockers. And there's really no surprise about this. In fact, an ad blocker is one of the first extensions that I ever installed when I found out about them. Now, when you first start searching for ad blockers after you find out about extensions, you might feel a little bit overwhelmed about the results. I mean, there's 819 search results uh, just within the Firefox add-ons when I search for ad blocker. Uh, a lot of them have high ratings, so you might be confused about which one to install. It's good to see that uBlock Origin is ranked pretty high uh, in the search results and also has the little recommended trophy next to it. And pretty high amount of users are using it, so maybe most people go for this. And that's a good thing, because I consider uBlock Origin to be one of the better add-on extensions. It's usually able to block ads better than the competition, as well as do it with using less RAM. But what if I told you that you could block ads without installing any extension in your browser whatsoever using functionality that is built right into your operating system? What I am talking about is the Etsy host file. Uh, so this is a file that is gonna be on your computer already located in the Etsy folder. And I should probably make this a little bit bigger so that we can actually see it. Uh, so if we take a look at my host file, uh, this is what it looks like, and yours is going to look similar to this as well, uh, except you're going to have uh, probably a different name here next to your host, unless you named your computer Kenny Desktop as well. Now what this file does is it assists in addressing network nodes that are in a computer network. So it basically works like a DNS server, allowing you to map human-friendly, easy-to-remember addresses to IP addresses, uh, except this works more like a private local DNS. And it also overrides any DNS queries because your computer is going to look at this file first to resolve any domains and if Etsy host has an answer to what that domain is, then it's not even going to ask the DNS server. Uh, so the way that this file is laid out, you have an IP address on the left-hand side. Uh, so this is like the local host that we see over here, 127.0.0.1. Uh, and then over to the right, you have uh, what the actual DOM name would be, so localhost in this case, but it can be uh, any .com, .org, uh, whatever type of top-level domain. And I just realized that I'm in read-only mode, so why don't we uh, just go ahead and do that as sudo, or do as, rather, uh, so I can actually edit this file. So if I wanted to block something, I just want to route it to 0, .0, 0.0.0.0, which is just a non-routable address. Uh, some people might tell you to also put it to 127.0.0.1, but you don't really want to do that because it's your loopback and it has to wait for a timeout. So this is actually going to be slower uh, than just doing the four zeros. So let's say that I wanted to essentially block tiktok.com. I would just do 0.0.0.0, .0 and then over here, I'm going to write tiktok.com, and right quit this file. Now, after making the changes, we have to flush out our DNS cache, because DNS records are usually going to stay on your system for a little while, uh, and it's actually a good thing. It really helps with loading web pages, because most websites, they aren't changing their IP or domain that often. So it doesn't make sense to go and ask a DNS every single time. You need to find out what you know, duckduckgo.com is or what youtube.com is. Uh, just cache it on your system. But anyway, to flush that cache, uh, you just wanna use this command right here. So there we go, it's flushed out my cache. And that should be all that I need to do uh, in order to get this to work. So let's come back over to Firefox and we'll do tiktok.com. I don't think I need to restart Firefox. Uh, okay, so it's still loaded. Um, let's see if I can dump my cache in here. Yeah, so let's clear data. See if this works. Maybe I do need to restart Firefox. Okay, looks like I do. So we'll just close out of it. All 
Okay, so now if I go to tiktok.com, so you can see it's working now. So HTTPS only mode alert. Uh, so it's not actually going to, H it's not able to get HTTPS. So we know it's working. Uh, and if we continue to HTTP site, it tells us that it's unable to connect. And this configuration is system wide. So it's gonna to apply to every single browser uh, that you have on your computer. Uh, and same thing with any other networking application. So like if I go back to my terminal uh, and I run any commands against tiktok.com, like if I want to ping tiktok.com, you see that it's actually pinging localhost and it's getting a response back almost instantly in less than a 10th of a millisecond. Um, what else is there? Oh, I can trace route tiktok.com <laughs> and it just automatically goes to localhost. So there's no hops, no routers that are in between uh, me and tiktok.com because it's on an unroutable address. And another advantage that this has over using in-browser ad blocks is that it's instantaneous. So with most browser-based ad blockers, your browser sees the website first and it tries to go to it, it tries to load it, but then the ad blocker jumps into action and blocks it. With Etsy host, we're blocking sites at a system level. So Firefox can't even begin to load TikTok.com. It's just instantly blocked. Now, you're probably thinking at this point that this is kind of cool, but there's just so many websites that are out there uh, to block that, especially with the ad sites, they tend to have these crazy nonsense domains that it would just be too tiresome to go through and add them line by line to Etsy hosts. Well, guess what? You don't actually have to uh, because there is a GitHub that has a pretty good repository of different block lists. And of course, I'll have this in the description so that you guys can go to it. Um, so if we take a look here, there's different categories of site blocking that you can do. So you have the adware and malware. So these are all going to be adware and malware domains. You've got a fake news domain. Funny how that is, uh, what, 3,000 more unique domains than adware and malware. Interesting. I wonder when fake news overtook malware as being more common on the web. Uh, gambling, porn, no surprise that that has the most unique domains. Uh, social, and then there's combination. So you can block fake news and gambling. You can block fake news and porn. Uh, you know what? I'm gonna block fake news, gambling, porn, and social. So uh, let's take a look at the raw host file. Uh, and so we can see that there's a whole lot here. So basically what I'm gonna want is everything starting from here down. Uh, and <laughs> there's a lot of Reddit getting blocked. I guess a lot, well, no, that's social. I was gonna say there's a lot of fake news on Reddit, but uh, there is. <laughs> Reddit is blocked for a multitude of reasons. I think, I think Reddit actually meets all of these criteria, except for the gambling, I guess. Uh, all right, so we have that, and let's vim into host. And, um, oh yeah, that's right, I gotta be, gotta be root. All right, so paste this in. Um, yeah, massive, massive list of stuff. And after you have all of the domains pasted in, you can go ahead and uh, clean things up in case there's any domains that you want to remove from the block list. So I'm gonna go ahead and remove Infowars because, you know, Infowars can be a good laugh. I need to keep up to date with everything that the satanic globalist pedophiles are doing. Uh, so there we go. Delete any domains that you don't want to block and then save the file. Uh, and then of course, go ahead and flush the DNS again. And there you go. You're all set. Uh, you're now blocking ads with your host file. And like I said, this is going to apply to every application. It's going to apply to all the browsers that you have on your system and anything else that communicates with the internet.